Let me. Okay. We're going to be doing another fucking video, and we are very happy to have tyrannical Lord Oppressor from fucking Lord Humongous, a fucking band that I I am genuinely into. I really like a lot, you know. So we have, definitely was wanting to do this uh, interview. So uh, welcome, motherfucker. Yo, thanks. Um, appreciate you having us on. I was telling you before we push record, there's like two kinds of people in the world. There's motherfuckers that will do an interview in their gym shorts, uh, sitting in the room drinking coffee, and then there's motherfuckers that put spike collars and all this shit on. So uh, I'm, I, I knew I was a good company when we decided to do this. <laughs> I know. Actually, I did me. I was about to put some spikes on. I guess I should have because you fucking did the whole Lord Humongous outfit. That's the way it should be. You know, when I listen to fucking extreme metal, like, for example, your band, we've already been in contact and talking and whatnot, and you send me the shit. But if I would have saw your CD or record, or whatever, just seeing the cover and the, the way the band looked, I would have wanted to check it out regardless. I was like, yeah. this, this fucking band has to be good. You had your new uh, CD out, this fucking great artwork on the cover. Yeah. Uh, raped by nukes with that fucking vagina right there. <laughs> <laughs> I figured uh, if we were going to do a record to get attention, you know, like to get people to have a look. If we're doing the, you know, white uh, background, red logo, obviously we're communicating that we're like, you know, disciples of Archgoat and bands like that. But also yeah. I thought... If Archgoat has, you know, Goatman fucking a nun with Chris Moy in art, uh, we might as yeah. well have a, an Earth pussy getting uh, raped by uh, nuclear war. <laughs> you know, it's like the closest oh. thing we can come to to that, you know. It, it says fucking black metal and thrash metal. And also, I fucking love the uh, oh, it's fucking camera background, but you can't see the artwork. Uh, anyway, those of you... I will have a review, a full review on this with all the packaging and everything to show everything because th this is done well. Uh, I mean, it, it really is. I fucking love the aesthetic. I mean, that, that's what I like. You know, I, I don't want to see, like you said, some motherfucker doing gym shorts and wearing a fucking hat sideways. I don't want to see that when I listen to fucking extreme metal. I want to see motherfuckers with axes and spikes and shit. And, yeah. you know, people may call that corny, but I guess I like corny because I like shit like that, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, we're coming from uh, as a U.S. like black thrash band. The lineage that we're coming from is shit like Pro Fanatica, right? So on Pro yeah. Fanatica, they get their fucking cocks out. <laughs> you know, know. Like, <laughs> there's no subtlety involved in like U.S. black metal when you go that far back. Same thing with um, like Nunslaughter, bands like that. Yeah. These are bands that did nothing subtle. You don't do anything subtle. And, you know, Lord Humongous, our goal was, you know, to completely erase any sort of like pretentious artsiness or subtlety because it's that's not what we're here for and uh the whatever the 13 year old kid in me doesn't want to see that you know <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean i'm all for that you, you're right it ain't talking about going back to propanautica when i first discovered them i saw the picture of him with fucking cock out with shit all over his face look now this is a band i need to check this out you know <laughs> that's what i want to see you know and yeah. all this fucking artsy bullshit which again i'm you know, I like some artsy kind of stuff, but when somebody's just being a bunch of fucking pussies and crying about everything, that that's yeah. not black metal. Yeah. Or black metal, thrash metal, for all that matter, it's none of that shit. No, certainly. And, you know, I mean, I'm with you, man. Like, I, and I know uh, from watching your channel, you are not one of these guys, uh, as much as the perception might be, that only likes old shit. Like, you're always listening to all kinds of different stuff, different genres, and oi, and punk. Yeah. But, you know, so it's not it's not that like being against specific things or being stuck in a box. But in terms of creating music or creating a band, I think uh, sometimes putting yourself into a very strict box is the way to go. That's what we did. We were like we we're not even like based in a certain genre. We're based in like a couple albums like it, it like it's like Sodom Code Red. Goat Penis, Apocalypse War and the first Exodus record. It's like that's that's our genre. Three records. <laughs> I can agree to the, with that. I, I really can because it, it is straight up thrash metal, but it is not, you know, fucking Exodus or Testament. There's some definite black metal sound in there and Sodom, especially. And uh, I love the vocals. They're, they're war, almost like war metal vocals, but also death metal ish as well, which I yeah. think is fucking great. Um, it's funny too. Um, when you first sent this to me, you know, you, you sent me the cassette first and we were talking, and then I, I listened to the CD and I know it's, it's on uh, Apple Music and all that shit. So I sent the link to a bunch of people I knew and 
of course, everybody fucking loved it. Oh, this is fucking great. And what's funny is when I first heard it, I just said, this is great black thrash. But numerous people told me, yeah, this totally is cool. It's like fucking like an old Razorback band. If you remember, yes. right, you know, and that is a fucking compliment there, too. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, I was huge into the Razorback stuff before uh, before it became Billy Razorback and whatever band his wife was doing. I'm not trying to shit on that label, but yeah. in the later days, it started to suck. But Frightmare yeah. era, uh, what are they? Zombie ritual, blood freak. That was the shit. Yes, man. yes. It, and when I and and when they told me that, I was like, you know what? Actually, this sound. I mean, not carbon copy, but as that same like g- like ghoul and fright frightmare as that thrash yeah. background, but still heavy as fuck, death metalish kind of. So yeah. it has that same kind of feel, and I I also love the production. It's very clean, but yeah. in a good way. Not this fucking overproduced shit. At least the drums sound real. And it's yeah. not, it's clean, but still has an edge to it in the fucking heavy, thick guitars. I was listening to it again in the car just a while ago, man. This yeah. way it opens up, you know, with uh, the the speech of the Ayatollah of rock and roller from the fucking Road Warrior. Man, it's, yeah, it's man. Just, just opens with like, punch you in the face. And uh, yeah, I I don't know. Any of you motherfuckers have not listened to this. You need to go look at, listen to it because I am, uh, <laughs> It's to me, it's one of the best releases so far this year. E- oh, easy, easy. In uh, so, in terms of that production, man, um, we like I said, we really like honed in on songwriting wise. It was like I want the songs to sound like something that came off of Sodom Code Red, which to me is the best Sodom record. I know, like, yeah, Agent Orange is a fucking legend record. Uh, M sixteen is a legend record, but it's not exactly the kind of thrash I'm looking for, but. Songwriting wise, it's Sodom Code Red. So when we went to record, originally the thought was it's going to sound like you know Go Penis Blasphemy. But then we we ended up recording it with the approach of like what would Exodus do in the studio on their first record. So yeah, the guitars ended up being cleaner. Um, the vocals, you know, as much as like we didn't want to drench them in reverb, and then um, you know it just kind of ended up being like old school thrash production with a war metal approach. And uh, that's why you know, we also didn't down tune. So like we covered that Go Penis song and that yeah. Go Penis is down tuned all the fuck. But what we right. learned was if you write a good fucking song, you can play it in standard tuning and still sound heavy. But we were like, you know, Exodus, how would they approach this recording in like on Bonded by Blood on that record? And so we did that. So, you know, the the goal of the production was do it in the old way, pan the guitars, single guitar take, uh, single guitar tracks, which I know a lot of bands double up, but we were like, no, let's just like do it like we were kind of back in the old in the old school days, you know, like a studio that's not a metal studio recording a thrash oh, metal band, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you said you you didn't double track, but the guitars sound thick and heavy as fuck on there, so it didn't need it. I mean, it's yeah. it's great, and the the songwriting is really good too because there's a like every song tells a story. You know, it, it's uh, the lyrics are great, which we'll kind of get upon touch yeah. upon that here yeah. in a minute. But like the, the music itself, it's catchy as fuck, man. There's, there's also some anthemic kind of stuff. They're just chorus gang yeah. sound. I was gonna say gang bang. I mean, <laughs> gang, <laughs> whatever the fuck. But it, it was uh. Yeah, it's fucking great shit. So, uh, when did this project start? I mean, it's, I guess I'm saying relatively new. I mean, yeah, man, it's, it's new in terms of, um, the record from, so I'll put it like this in, in 2012, um, I made a demo track for the song Just Walk Away. It was way, way shorter, but I was kind of like, uh, I've been in a lot of bands, a lot of us have been in a lot of bands playing a lot of different music and, um, I always wanted to start a thrash band. Metal is the the genre. It's the only genre that I listen to. Um, but back then I was listening to Municipal Waste and I was like, yo, what if Municipal Waste had Will from Mortician singing? So <laughs> I recorded Just Walk Away and did like some real low whispery vocals and just made a demo and then never did anything with it. And then um, six months ago, um, I found myself in a band full of people who were like capable of like playing thrash metal and we just kind of you know took that single song uh, uh just walk away and then uh within six months time we wrote 
recorded, got, got together with Jem's label and released the album. And within that time also, you know, practiced twice and then played our first show. So it was real quick. Like it was like an idea up here for a long time. And then, you know, you find the right people. And it was like, I just kept pushing our, the guy, our drummer, uh, reactor, <laughs> he, uh, he owns a studio um, and his, he lost his regular job. And so I knew, okay, he can sit in the studio for like 10 hours a day because he doesn't have a job right now. So I was like, yo, we got to record this. And it was like every week, like pushing and like, yo, you got to write that solo. You got to do this. Like we're just trying to push everybody. Cause I knew we had to get this out. We had to like make it happen before this like magic moment took place. So, and you know, the, the goal is always to be a live band. The goal is always to like, you know, not just be a studio project, but in terms of recording, it was like, we had to fucking do it within six months. And so like a lot of the lyrics, uh, I just wrote, you know, in the studio, finished them in the studio while they were recording the music and stuff. It was like super, super quick, man. Um, maybe would have even been different song structure wise had we had more time, but I think that's the charm. You know, you don't want to think about it too much. This is fucking knuckle dragon music. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. A lot of times just spontaneity and just get in there and fucking bash it out. But it works. I mean, all this the stuff doesn't sound generic to me. And you can it's very obvious that I mean, I already know you've been in other bands and whatnot, but it's very obvious all the members are very capable musicians. It's not like some half ass shit. So it's it's done really well. And I I I foresee this taking off really well. I mean, I know a fucking J Dog homeboy was excited about it and he so I wouldn't be surprised you did some shit with him later down the road, you know? And Yeah, man. I, uh, the, I sent it to him because again, like you and I, uh, J dog is a crucial motherfucker. Like, you know, he talks about like, you know, smashing posers and shit and people can talk shit on him because they do, you know, like especially the TC warrior guys, but he is the embodiment of fucking Paul Bayloff, right? Paul Bayloff yeah. didn't like that fucking, he wouldn't like that uh, what, what Tomb Mold was wearing gym shorts either. Uh, although Paul yeah. Bailoff wore some fucking gym shorts. But like, <laughs> he would smash a poser. And uh, so when I said it to j Dog, you know, I was like, I was like, you know, maybe this guy will like it because it's got a pussy on the cover and it's like crucial shit. And so, yeah, man. And he he quoted it in his little review. He said, thrash with sack. I told the dudes in Humongous, I was like, we got to put a sticker on the front of the LP that says like thrash with sack. <laughs> Yeah, you make a fucking t-shirt and put that on the back of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, it's man. good, man. It, it it really is. And that's why when when I, he started talking about that, I, I it didn't even surprise me at all. Cause I, I I mean I already knew it's good stuff, man. So yeah, I, I honestly it's from from my point of view, the sky's the limit up to you as far as how you want to take it. I think it could really take off. It's really cool. And also besides the visual aesthetic, which is fucking great. Um, also the theme, you know, obviously if people know about Mad Max, they know Lord Humongous, the Ayatollah of rock and roll, you know, it, yeah. people should know that, uh, folklore and, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you've, uh, incorporated. I mean, just let the song, just walk away. If anybody knows what that is, just walk away, just walk away. It won't be hard. People know that that quote from Humongous on the road warrior, which it's Mad Max too, but it's road warrior here in america and yeah i don't know it's a fucking great great theme on there so uh we're gonna kind of touch upon that the lyrical content uh your aesthetics and everything yeah yeah man i mean like in terms of a thrash metal concept you know like um it, it's like there's no real better thrash metal universe than that because it's uh fucking nuclear holocaust it's famine, it's dudes in like spikes and leather and like, you know, assless chaps and shit. And yeah. um, it's just like the aesthetics of Mad Max, as much as it's an Australian, you know, production, that's a like an American cinema movie from the 80s that like when I was growing up, I'm like 42 years old. So when I was growing up, um, that's the movie you watch, you know, when you go to the, the, the VHS rental store, you get something like that. And like, you know, the violence is like, portrayed pretty seriously it's pretty like yeah. intense um there's some like really really like just heavy ideas men <laughs> betraying one another and feeding on man to yeah. me that just translates into thrash metal aesthetics if you're not going to go for the 
satanic route or the party pizza route, which I don't like. Like in terms of Mad Max and uh, just the universe, to me, that's strong imagery. And I, I still don't necessarily want Lord Humongous to always just sing about Mad Max. And I was kind of bummed on Metal Archives when I uploaded our shit. I just say, you know, it gives you like lyrical themes. And I was like, you know, famine, anti-Christianity, war. I was like, those are the themes of like Mad Max. You know, God is dead. Somebody went in and changed it to like Mad Max movie. And I was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> but like, it's the idea of man betraying man and nuclear holocaust and famine and all that so that will be the the course of lord humongous going forward um it just so happened that on this record it was from start to finish you know mad max terminology but i mean what an amazing universe man every movie except for thunderdome thunderdome sucks <laughs> but every yeah movie we, we, we can get into that too <laughs> But you're right, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, that is the ultimate heavy metal movie. Yeah. It's funny, you know, I, I, we've been talking, I didn't know how old you were, but I knew you were older. I, I'm, yeah. I'll be 50 this year, but you're in your 40s, so you, it, it's it's funny, people in their 40s and whatnot seem to get this shit better than these fucking new pussies. But again, I don't want to say, you know, talk about young people, because there's a lot of young people that, man, I come across it, or they know what's up, and they're into this crazy shit so i can't just say young people in general but but you get it man and uh it's funny road warrior i actually saw that at the theater when it first came out and 81 when it came out and at the time i just thought it was a, its own movie i didn't even know what, what uh, mad max was you know the intro with the clips from before i thought that was yeah. didn't know it was another movie and yeah it fucking blew me away and then shortly after that i saw i found out it was a sequel and it's one of the best fucking movies of all time no question yeah yeah man it's uh it, it's really striking like how george miller managed to like visually like portray so many things in that movie that were horrific like you're watching that rape scene and it's mad you know it's max watching it from afar and it's almost like as an outsider it's like you're you're he's almost discovering the horrific nature of this world as he's about to go into it and try to like you know fight for his own survival but like as a kid i'm watching that and it's like i don't know that i had seen violence portrayed like that you know it's seen rambo and shit like that but yeah um you know not only that but just visually you know the 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 metal uh fucking humongous mask like it just it translates so well into something that is like heavy metal and thrash metal. And um, that's kind of why we chose, you know, the name and this, uh, you know, the, the image of the humongous as our, as our logo, because it's so fucking memorable, man. And it's just uh, like striking visual imagery, even in, you know, like uh, fucking the, the last uh, Fury Road, man. I mean, so much amazing imagery yeah. that uh, it's, there's nothing more metal than that. The Bullet Farmer, I don't, if you're familiar with fucking Fury Road, the fucking Bullet Farmer, what is more like thrash metal than fucking Bullet Farmer, you know? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, man. It, it, it the visuals and everything, and even, even after uh, Road Warrior came out, there was so many fucking rip off movies that came on out after that, but nothing touches that. And you're right, Humongous is a, a such of a iconic character. I mean, yeah. they didn't actually show him fighting anybody on there per se, but still, I mean, his presence commanded your attention when he was on the uh, the screen. Yeah, you know what's also really interesting about his character? They don't go into a back deep backstory, but I, I don't know if you recall the scene where when uh Max first uh gets that 18 wheeler and tries to take it back to the complex and he runs through that uh humongous camp. They show it briefly, him looking, getting his pistol out. There's a little picture of a family and like yeah. a, a cross, a military cross. It kind of tells you, gives you a little bit of glimpse of his backstory, but you know, it still makes you wonder, you know, what what was he a military person that got fucked up or yeah, whatever. But yeah, and, and I really looked into that um, in terms of writing the uh, some of the parts of the record, but also our stage sort of uh, approach, man. Because I, you look in the uh, in the middle of the, the film when like the the wastelanders are like circling the uh, the compound, and you see like humongous, and he's like you know he, he's like reciting something. He's reciting the Earl King, the the old like German poem about this father who is riding with his son and his son keeps telling him like the Earl King is coming. The Earl King is coming. The father doesn't believe him. And before the end of the, the, the tale, the Earl King kills his son and he holds his son dead in his arms. And he realizes like, 
he, he turned a blind eye to this danger. And it's such a fucking metaphor for the world yeah. turning a blind eye to like nuclear holocaust and like all these things that are impending all the fucking time. So that character was written in an amazing way. And he's, you know, he's like, you know, uh, kind of going through this fucking play, reciting it while these people are going crazy who have no idea, right? But he's like yeah. this educated, sort of like weird cult leader. Um, this is such a fucking interesting character. And the little shit in the case, like there's so much stuff you could read into it. Like there's a weird uh, Nazi, um, uh, the, the fucking uh, Toten skull. And you're like, this doesn't coordinate with him being in the military at that time. So is this something that he found... And now he's starting to like, this is the evolution of, you know, you read about people like reading uh, Machiavelli and all this stuff and how like, just like the art of war and it keeps going forward and forward. It's like, this is how a tyrant is created. He looks at the remnants of the old world and he learns from all of these horrific things. I, I so fucking fascinating that character. So fascinating. Yeah, it, it's uh, a lot of times people see that. Oh, it's just a, a stupid action movie. No, it's got a lot more depth to it than that. And you're right about the character of Humongous. Outwardly, he looks like a fucking brute, muscle bound, you know, mass spikes and fucking bonded shit on. But then when he speaks, he's very articulate. It's like you said, you can tell he's an educated person. Then he's right. leading all these fucking psychos and savages and shit, like fucking Wes, the guy with the mohawk and oh. crazy people. But you know, it's just. It, 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 it they it, if they would have made that character of him just being psychotic and screaming on the mic it, it would not have been as impactful for sure yeah. yeah and i i thought of that in terms of like presentation for the band like what i really wanted it to be was you know there's two modes for lord humongous music there's headbang parts and there's mosh parts and uh mm -hmm. i i love black metal but you know uh, uh, Death Like Silence was fucking up when they said no mosh because there's nothing more fucking yeah. intense and violent when it when it's not a pussy mosh <laughs> when it's like I've been in mosh pits where I was afraid I was going to get badly hurt and those were the most fucking thrilling so I imagine that when I come out on stage the people in the in the in the circle need to feel the 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 that the Lord Humongous is displeased if somebody doesn't go home with a smashed face or a missing tooth or a broken bone. I don't want to be fun mosh. Uh, I want to be anti, you know, I've been, I've been in uh, municipal waste pits. It's a good time. I wasn't scared. I've been in a bolt thrower pit, which you never would think that of that as a mosh band, right? Yeah. I thought I was going to be trampled to death and it was one of the most memorable and thrilling moments of my life. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the thing about it, when you, uh, when someone gets on stage dressed like that or whatever it be, when people see that, they automatically sense that you're being, you're taking it serious. You know, you're taking your art serious. It's not just up there. Like you crawl out of bed and looking like shit. And that, that's what I want to see. I want to see theatrics. And uh, I, again, you said the black metal and also the moshing parts, what I, it does have all that, you know, it's got the, uh, the catches and actually uh the song uh terminal psychotic which is about the night rider from mad max before I am but that song the chorus man it just makes you just want that's a fucking real that's like a like a song to be used for a single and make a music video for it because that's a good yeah. fuck god damn it's a good song yeah yeah man and like you know i i took some of that from um some of the bands that I respect in thrash, I mean, uh, the the kings in in part of my world are uh, are noir because they create essentially Apollyon and Aggressor created like black thrash in terms of like they honed it, they defined it, and some of their songs like have parts. They're not they're not even necessarily sing along parts, but like it's the black thrash attack and conqueror, and so many of these songs like have parts that. You take you, you're in the circle and you come out and you want to jump up and sing it and then go back. Like I don't know, I, yeah. the songs that stand out to me within uh, thrash metal are songs that almost feel like you're part of the machine, right? And so, yeah. anthemic parts, sing along parts. Um, that's the stuff for me that needs to be present. You either need to be mocking, head banging, or singing along. Otherwise, Lord Humongous isn't doing its job. You know, it's like that's that's our only goal. Well, it works because, again, the songs have that energy to it. You know, it goes from 
some songs of a, like, like a blast beat and then it goes right into that bouncy thrash where you just want to just imagine just fucking people up to it, man. It's, I don't know. I, I, I'm literally, as I said, man, let's start this video so I can start sucking your dick about this, but I'm, right. I'm serious. This is a good, a good fucking album. You know, you sent it to me, but I, I would have bought this on my own because this is excellent shit. And this is the stuff I want to hear. I mean, it's, you know, it's also too one of those things a lot of people cry. Say, there's too many fucking new bands. Like, well, yeah, and, and there's really nothing you can do to do anything original. But what you got to do is write catchy songs. And that's what happened here. This has got fucking black metal, thrash metal, and it's catchy as fuck. I'll listen to it over and over. And I, I, like I said, all the people I've shared it to around my area, all of them fucking love it. Because they're all yeah. into the same shit too, you know. The movies yeah. like that, but also that kind of music. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I think I hear people say there's too many new bands, but like, I don't know, as a, as a listener to, to metal in general, like I consume all of it. Like, I don't want to be somebody who's just constantly stuck in the past. Like I said, you know, first Exodus record is like in the blood and archetype of the, the music that we're making, but I'm constantly listening to every new thing that, all my favorite bands release. I scour the internet for new new black bands, uh, new thrash bands. I don't care what part of the genre you are. Like, I think, you know, the reason metal is still so like vibrant and full of like like teenagers and shit versus something like punk, where it's just a bunch of old guys dying, standing watching yeah. the same old fucking descendants show, is that yeah. like bands continue to come and replace the ones that came before because you know let's face it i know, I know how you feel I, I but i go and i purchase the new um testament record a new exodus record and yeah. i'm like well this is all right but warbringer released something that was more than you know more thrash than this or fucking uh, i've been listening to this band tumor boy from china like hmm. there are bands out there that are like I don't know, man, you go so far in the genre and it sort of becomes uh, a little bit wimpy. And so you need bands to refresh like Dark Throne. When's the last time they released a good fucking record? I, I don't it wasn't recently, man. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, respect to, to that band. But like um, it's like there are new bands continuing. Sure, they didn't create it. But there are new bands continuing it. So I'm I'm always trying to listen for new bands. And I hope, you know, people listen to, to our band because just because we weren't there in the fucking beginning doesn't mean it's not in our blood, you know? It's like not, our, it's not your fault when you were born, man. Yeah, absolutely. And I, people that say there's too many bands, I mean, well, if there was not any, any new bands coming out, that means the fucking whole metal scene's dying. Yeah. And it's not. There's So that tells, because usually people that are into metal are a different type of person, and usually they hear a band, and I want to do that. I want to go out and play that music, not just lay on your ass and play in the background like people listen to rap or pop music, whatever. They want to go do it. Yeah. So I'm all for it. I mean, there are a ton of mediocre bands, but there's also a ton of really good ones. I mean, it's a lot. These days, it's kind of hard to keep up with everything, but I'd rather have that problem than hardly any bands at all and shows sucking. And, you yeah. know, that's why I can't raise, say anything about that. People talk shit about it, but hey whatever if, it, if the band sucks i don't gotta listen to it <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah man and there's plenty of clones and um you know that's that's gonna happen too so it's like if i listen to a band again use the dark throne reference there's a million dark throne clones out there right but yeah. if dark throne hasn't released a record that sounded like old dark throne in a while i'll take a fucking you know vampiric rights good example or one of these yeah. bands out here that's doing something that sounds like that because uh I don't know, man. Uh, like, good example. Like, fucking, let's pick on Exodus for a minute. Love that band. Last record sounds kind of middle of the road. You know, it's like they lost whatever crucial element they had that that tied them. And rather, it's maybe just getting bigger and wanting to, you don't have the same influence anymore. That's fine. But you get, give me some 15 year old kid in uh, clean white Nikes, and I guarantee you he's going to write more passionate thrash metal than the new Exodus record. It's just how yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, because they got that youthful energy. It's new. It's fresh. Right now, that's why a lot of times bands that have been around a long time, this stuff kind of gets stagnant after a while. You know, even like Slayer, I, I, I like most all their albums, but even at the end, I don't think those albums sucked. But they just didn't have the same, you know, that uh, angst in it. You know, it just didn't have the same feeling. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. all about the new bands. 
Yeah, man. Uh, I do have to say on that. I loved, uh, I, you know, given the circumstances, I thought Gary Holt was amazing in Slayer in terms of yeah. great solos. Uh, he has a solo on that Repentless record that's one of my favorite solos ever. It's just fucking great. I think it's in uh, You Against You. Um, you know, yeah, but it's not the Slayer that, you know, I mean, I think they created like fucking Rain and Blood and where do you go from there? <laughs> I don't know where you go from there. Yeah, it's kind of a high bar to beat, you know, or, or repeat, if you will. But yeah, I'm all about uh, that. So, uh, so you're you're saying your next album is not going to be a, a a for you. Your next album is not going to be a, a concept album about Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> I, you know, I think uh, there'll probably be some uh, probably be some like definite Mad Max lore on there. I know we're going to cover uh, Master Blaster by Goat Penis because um, oh, again, cool. no, okay. to me, that's the greatest war metal band ever. Um, yeah, but uh, it, there there will also be songs that are just kind of about the world of like holocaust and famine and shit that may not be actual mad max tracks we'll see how it goes they may have mad max uh themed titles but uh it's more just the idea of that world and uh what it offers um you know it's like if you're gonna write about evil you only have a few different avenues you got satanism you got like military evil which is like shit like marduk does you know shit like that and then you've got you know nuclear war and so i'm like yeah we'll, we'll stick in that camp for a little while <laughs> it's like why not oh, yeah yeah i mean i think with that uh the first album in that mad max lore but i i don't feel it, it as you paint in a corner where you can't change it up i mean literally your kind of music any kind of destruction and killing and hate i mean anything it, it all falls under the same umbrella yeah, I worry. Uh, my biggest worry, honestly, man, is I don't want people to call us a Mad Max metal band or something like. I mean, that is that is our avatar, you know. But I don't want people to be like Mad Max themed gimmick band, Lord Humongous, because we're just a, a like a black thrash band. Uh, kind of, we don't want to be any diff- perceived any differently than a band like Sodom. It just so happens that like Lord Humongous is our gas mask guy or eddie or whatever you want to say you know like um so i worry about getting like um you know almost invalidated by the strong imagery you know but like i want people to be i want people to imagine that we're niflheim with uh with a metal mask that's that's it we're crucial motherfuckers uh but it's not a gimmick themed you know i don't get up there and pretend to be the Lord humongous and uh you know it's it, that's not what it's about this is just the fucking war paint essentially you know yeah i think uh with that the people that are you know really into underground music are not gonna they're gonna understand it but the typical fucking retard that you know that maybe they li- they listen to cannibal corpse and that's about it and they, yeah. they'll be the kind of people oh yeah that, that, that mad max band you know the, the fucking idiots that won't even be in the music five years from now but I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a great aesthetic and it works really well. And again, I love the look. And you know, it it fits as fucking metal as fuck is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, man. When we uh when we first geared up for the, you know, for the first time was uh officially was just the practice before our show. Like I had never put on all the stuff, all the spikes. And it was almost like, yeah, we'll see if this, uh, we'll, we'll see how this looks. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's in your head, but it's like, uh, we'll see if this makes sense or not. And it totally made sense. You know, same thing with singing, man. I had never sang like this. Um, all the other projects that I'm involved in are not, are not like this type of vocal. So yeah. it was like, I'm going to try and see what my vocals sound like, like this. And they just came out like this. <laughs> so it's like, everything was like proof of concept. It was like all up here. And then our like first practice, it was like, let's see if it makes sense. And it made sense, you know? Yeah. It's funny how a lot of times you have a concept like that and then it turns out successful, but not exactly how you expect it. It's a little different, but still, it's still in the same vein. And I think it works really well. It just, uh, don't come out there with a master blaster helmet on next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a little guy to sit on my shoulders for the yeah, next. Yeah, a little day. fucking midget. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll spend a brief minute to talk about Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I remember when that came out, and I went to the theater, and I was so disappointed. I, I just couldn't believe. I mean, it, it was okay, but all that shit with those kids on there and stuff that ruined Tomorrow, Tomorrowland and all that crap that fucking ruined it. 
It's probably the first yeah. 20 minutes of it was the best. Yeah, you know? I agree. But after, yeah. after that, they fucking put him on the gulag and threw his ass out on the course. And, yeah. Or camel. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, camel. It's, it went all down, you I'm with you. I, I I always say like that movie was cool until it turned into fucking Peter Pan. Like yeah, it was like a great Mad Max movie, and then they sent him out with the uh, Aboriginals. Or I mean, I guess they weren't really Aboriginals. They were just like they created. They were like a tribe of the apocalypse. But like yeah. it just lost everything for me because you know what we want? We're fucking. We want like war and destruction and like fucking leather and all that shit, man. Like I want. You know, the Road Warrior is to me the archetypical, like perfect Mad Max movie. Again, Fury Road's fantastic, but the Road Warrior has the right amount of like grindhouse in it. It has the right amount of violence in it. And uh, yeah, dude, uh, I have something about Beyond Thunderdome. Once you once you leave on the Gulag, that movie's over for me. I turn it off every time. Yeah, it, it was pretty fucking horrible after that, but. Up to that point, it was really cool. And you know something else that really pissed me off on there is, I'm sure you already know this, the gyro captain Bruce Spence from the Road Warrior was in here as well, yeah. and he played as a totally different fucking character. It, <laughs> and I was like, it fucking... I, I, I don't know why that, that pissed me off. But, you know, the only other good thing about that movie is what year did it come out? 80... Okay, was it 80, 88? I don't even remember what year it came out. But I saw it at the theater, and I bought the movie magazine, and that's when I first discovered Rose Tattoo, because Angry Anderson yep. was on there. Before that, I didn't know. I mean, I was a little kid, but I didn't know who that was. I read the magazine. Oh, the singer of, of Rose Tattoo. I was like, oh, it's a band. and yeah. So that was good, because I love Rose Tattoo. So that's how I found out about it. About them. Yeah, yeah, same man. I had no idea who that guy was, and he ended up being probably the most memorable character from that, other than like Master Blaster. He yeah. was memorable, and like I've always speculated, I don't know the truth about it, but I always imagine that once you have Tina Turner, you are under probably a lot of pressure to utilize her. And, uh, you know, so I feel like the commercial for the portion of that movie really steered it into a different direction because it's like, all right, man, you know, we, we got Tina Turner. We can't do the same, like, gritty. And it, it's proven because it's like a PG-13 movie. You're making yeah. this PG, you know. It's like they couldn't go to that level of violence. And uh, I think it suffered from that. Because, you know, you go back to uh, Fury Road, which I think is rated R. And, you know, he, he pulled no punches with that. There's some really disturbing imagery. Uh, there's really disturbing concepts, man. You have, like, Immortan Joe um, using, like, kind of withholding water from these people to essentially make himself a god. You know, he's like a yeah. Morton Joe giveth and a Morton Joe taketh away. Like, really, really interesting things about, like, uh, brainwashing and manipulation and, like, uh, strong, strong, like, ideals that seem to me in some ways to be missing from uh, uh, Thunderdome. I don't know. It's just it's not the same thing. Yeah, it, it it has a total different feel. Like you let you watch Mad Max and you watch Road Warrior, there is a very sense of impending doom. Like you realize something really bad's about to happen. Yeah. Even on Mad Max during the part where he's with his family and the happy music, you you realize something fucked up is going to happen later on. And uh, Beyond Thunderdome doesn't have that at all. No. Fucking kids and happy and it is. But I still, yeah. I'll still watch it from time to time, just uh, you know, for nostalgic the, reasons. Yeah, the only good thing that Thunderdome ever gave us, and it was a happy accident, was like when we were recording. I was like, "Yo, I want to record uh, Captain Benjamin Willard, Captain Willard from uh, Goat Penis." And then, I know. as we were recording it, I was like, "Fuck, Captain Walker!" I was like, "It's I, it, yeah. like, we just, it just made sense." <laughs> I know it was funny when I was, I was looking at the CD. Was like, oh, he's got some fucking th Thunderdome shit on there. I saw, Cap you know, Captain Walker. I know you changed the name of the song. But it yeah. was fitting for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Happy after that, man. We had no. We it was never cognizant that we were going to like you know we we just rewrote the lyrics to Captain Willard to be about uh Cap about you know Mad Max, but it was like never thought about it, and then it was like fuck yeah, perfect perfect coincidence, you know. Well, it worked out. Well, actually, I actually want to go back what you were talking about, about live, I know, live shows. I know I follow you on Instagram. I've been seeing there's been some flyers and stuff. How has the show been going? 
Yeah, man, they've been good. Um, we've uh, so far only played two, um, and uh, I think two, yeah. And uh, the one was like we jumped on like a pre-existing metal show, and it was like our first out, or our first uh, attempt. We had had like two practices, and so it was really just kind of like the practice show. And then uh, we did one local-ish here. We we say we're like a Pittsburgh band. But um, a few of us live in West Virginia, so we did a, a show at our local venue here uh, with a great band called Speed Bleeder, who's like the only other thrash metal band here in West Virginia. And uh, it was great. So, yeah, man, I think we're getting everything figured out in terms of like transition wise. Um, we we use like sound clips uh, and we finally got those lined up. There's There's a live video of us playing our second live show. And, uh, you know, it's great because uh, everything's going really well, you know, and the only time I, I talk in the middle of the, the 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 set is like we're getting ready to play our song, The Toe Cutter, and the mosh call for that song is Trample Their Bodies, and we were all like real enamored with it. So I take this big like pause and I'm like, yo, when I say Trample Their Bodies, I want to see you fucking trample their bodies. And we start, and then uh, our guitar player was playing uh, Captain Walker, <laughs> like completely playing the wrong song. So it was like, it took us like half the song to to recuperate. But like, it's like, yo, we this is our second show, so uh, we'll get it next time. By the time the by the time trample their bodies happened, though, bodies were trampled, so it was okay. I could imagine because the thing about it, I'm envisioning if I went to a show and I didn't even know who you were. And oh, what's this you Lord humongous? And then you come on stage looking like that. You yeah. start playing and the music is fucking good. Shit. I mean, that that's that goes hand in hand right there. And I, I again I think the name is getting around. I, I as I mentioned, we were talking before we pushed record about how the other day I did the uh, a live stream on jamming out all badass. If everybody knows about that other channel, which is fucking great, jamming out all badass good channel but i did a live stream we were talking i had this shirt off telling everybody hey if, you know, I need to check this out and numerous people oh yeah i've been hearing about that band oh, so yeah. the name is getting out there people were talking about it i, I honestly the only way you, your band is not gonna do well is if you just fucking blow your brains out or something <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying to avoid that this band's actually helped me not blow my brains out so that's good like <laughs> but yeah man our goal uh honestly the goal is like some bands are like, I want to do this, I want to do that. My goal is like, I want to play Nuclear War Now Fest. That's like, that's where all the war metal bands go. And I'm like, I, you know, there's the, the potential that we're too thrash for the war metal guys and too war metal for the thrash guys. I don't think so. Like, other than the Facebook, uh, you know, modern thrash uh, uh, bands uh, Facebook group that told me uh, I couldn't share my post because we were too black metal, but fuck them. Uh, we didn't have an Ed Repka art cover, so we didn't get considered yeah. trash. But like, uh, my goal is like, yeah, I want to play like some Nuclear War Now Fest. I want to, you know, I want to be involved with bands that are like like minded in terms of crucial motherfuckers, no clean vocals, no no core, no breakdowns, no gauge deers, none of that shit. So like, we're not accepting shows with bands like that. And it's not like, look. I'm fine with that music. There's there's some great bands in those genres. I just don't want Lord Humongous to play those kinds of shows. I want people to know that if you see Lord Humongous, we're only going to play with bands that sound this way. And that may seem closed-minded, but good example, man. You know, Mayhem and Cannibal Corpse just went on tour. Not interested in seeing that. I want to see Mayhem and a bunch of black metal bands or Cannibal Corpse yeah. and a bunch of death metal bands. I know that sounds crazy, but I just... That's just that's just how it how it needs to be for me. Like I don't want to mix genres. I just don't. It's like, yeah. Well, to go back to what you were talking about, like nuclear war and Al fest or whatever. I just know, like here in Texas, all the people that are into war metal and stuff are also into thrash and all that shit. And you know, yeah. you, we have all these uh, shows here with a lot of war metal bands and stuff, whatever. But I know some people are like that. Where they, I'm only into black metal. I can't listen to thrash metal or I fucking hate death metal. But around here, everybody likes it across the board. Somebody will like yeah. negative approach and they like exhumed yeah. and then they like Vlad Tepes, you know, yeah. some weird shit like that. That's what I'm just used to. And when people talk about that, they don't like other stuff or whatever, I, or that's too thrash for me. I, I, I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's like, I just want, you know, anything that fits into that, 
uh, you know, maybe it's a played out term, but like extreme metal, which like for those people that understand it, understand that it's like, it doesn't necessarily, when you talk about extreme metal involve core or it doesn't necessarily involve uh like jump the fuck up with us <laughs> kind of stuff. And again, man, I can fucking enjoy a lot of that stuff, but I just think there's something very like important about maintaining a crucial attitude um, with this band. Um, I don't necessarily feel that way with other projects, but um, I just want people to know that like, if you come to see Lord Humongous, it's not going to be necessarily an, ecle an eclectic show. It's going to be death metal, black metal, thrash metal bands that play things in like the old way, you know, and I, I got no problem with other bands that don't. I just think that at some level things are getting too eclectic. I don't know how to say it, you know, and again, I know we kind of blend genres, but it's just uh, for people who listen to it, like you kind of know, you know what I mean? Like you kind of know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, you got me on board. I, I It's good shit, you know? <laughs> so uh, you did this with the, uh gems label which is cool they mo mostly do cassettes from what i understand is this their first cd i don't i mean i know i follow them and everything it's a good label but is yeah. they mostly do cassettes so right um i think you know he uh his label kind of started i believe at the time when cds were like absolutely dead and uh i think slowly he's been doing more cds uh they do vinyl releases too but um yeah they i think they're like known for being a cassette label and, um, you know, we just wanted to do every format. So there's a vinyl coming. He's working on that now. Um, I think he's done CDs for Sidon, the other band that's on that label, um, which that's how we met uh, Gems and became friends with Sidon, who's a very, very uh, polarizing band in the black metal community. Like, um, and I met them and I realized that uh, they, they get a lot of shit because they incorporate like, j-rock shit uh you just have to listen to it i mean it's killer fucking black metal shit but uh definitely not the kind of band you would expect uh like a bunch of war metal bands to like cross paths with but i saw these guys handling criticism from all the elite guys in black metal and they were just like yeah fuck them they can suck my dick just the, the most cavalier fuck you oh you don't like this i'm gonna make it specifically at you attitude and uh, I knew Jim's worked with that, and I was friends with Jim's. So I sent him a message, and I was like, I didn't think Jim's would want us. Because, again, Jim's isn't really like a war metal label. And he he put out a band called, um, what the fuck were they called? Um, shit, I can't remember their name. But they, they had it in their CD. They said, no no capes, no corpse paint, no candelabras. And I was like, well, fuck that. I don't want to listen to none of that shit. Then um, uh, Vibe, they were called Vibe. And uh, then when we saw him, the dude was wearing like a ghillie suit. And I was like, well, there's a fucking gimmick right there. Get out of here. But um, <laughs> so I sent Gems a li uh, uh, the, the link to White Line Nightmare. I was like, yo, I know. I was like, do you know any thrash labels? Do you know any black labels that you could like, you know, get us in touch with? And he was like, I'll put it out. And so based on how I've seen him run his business, based on how who I know he is as a person, we were like, yeah, fucking we'll go with that. And the only other person I sent it to was uh, Adirondack Black Mass, who was super fucking cool and said, yeah, when you're done with it, send it to me. I'm interested. And then uh, I had sent it to Nuclear War now, because, again, if you, you want to go with the dude who, sell, who, who sells goat kings from blasphemy, that's what you want to go with. But um, once Gems was interested, we were like, you know, that's, that's a great label for us. And um, he he then picked up Satanic, uh, uh, Satanic Empire, and um um uh, mg08 which are um fucking goat penis worship bands uh oh, war cool. metal. amazing bands that sounds that's cool hey maybe you started a little trend on jim's label start putting some fucking good shit out yeah i mean yeah, yeah. other stuff I, i'm familiar they, they put out good stuff other too i'm not saying they're not any good but they were just very like, eclectic though yeah they were very yeah. eclectic and now it's like war metal time at jim's label so i like it yeah well, that's fucking cool. So he's putting a, a vinyl out of this. Yeah. Because this artwork would look great on a 12-inch for sure. Because I'm looking yeah. at this on a 12-inch. Yeah, this is the fucking nice shit right here. The, uh, the follow-up to that, that art was done by a guy named Paul Anderson. And mm -hmm. uh, I told Paul, I was like, yo, the only possible follow-up, our record has to be called Abort. And it's got to be him with a coat hanger ripping dead babies out of the planet Earth, you know? 
That would be right, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after this, I mean, I know this is still new. You're promoting this. What's next? EPs, seven inches, another full length? Yeah, um, I know for sure um, we want to cover, like I said, we want to cover Go Penis, uh, Master Blaster. I'd really like to do a cover of uh, And Then There Were None by Exodus just to get a little bit of that out. And then, like, I've already been working on some songs uh, for the next record. Our goal, though, is to, like, hang out with this record for a while, wait for the vinyl to come out, and, like, yeah. you know, just kind of try and play live as much as possible. Because, um, you know, I think nowadays um, you can do, like, a, a release like we did with cassette and CD, ride that out for a while, then almost have, like, a second release when the vinyl comes out and try to, you know, just really get that in the in the rotation. You know, we're still just trying to figure out how to break in and uh, you know i go on instagram and i'm trying to find people to help promote and there's a lot of like pages on there and you're like you know they're like hey send us your band we want to like network and you're like cool and they're like hey send us 45 dollars and we'll share you to our page and it's like fuck off you know it's the same thing as pay to play yeah. we're not going to do that either you know? yeah no that's bullshit no i think that's real that's a, a cool approach i mean you know definitely let let this fucking circulate let it fucking marinate people to get into it but also, I love what you did before, the little cassette singles. That yeah. is cool shit. And what's going to happen, by the time you do your second record or whatever, people are going to be, oh, I wish I would have got those cassettes back then. Yeah. Everybody's, I'll sell it for 40 bucks. I mean, not me, <laughs> but some fucking idiot will. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. my point is, I love that that uh, whole aesthetic with a cassette single. The cover was black and white. You even had a little uh, cutout that totally reminded me of the old days of you know, sending flyers and ads and whatnot like that. So it had that old school aesthetic. And I was telling somebody we were in the car. I was like, see, they, they these motherfuckers understand it. You know, he's got put these cassettes out, put out cool collectible stuff. And actually, your merchandise too is cool. This shirt is really cool. You know, and also the other one with the, the white one that was real as a real kind picture, friendly picture. <laughs> was only, which is on the cassette. And then the patches, the patches are fucking great. I have like yeah. the one you have on your your jacket right there the big one and this one here i fucking love this patch yeah yeah man that was uh that was almost like proof of concept that was uh i i worked that one up just to like i was like people need to understand what this band is and it's like bullets and upside down crosses and a shotgun and no subtlety and like I, our our slogan for all that shit has been like hail bailoff Hail uh, Sabbath, which was the fucking uh, goat penis guy, both, yeah. both passed away. I just want people to understand, you know, that it's there's there's no intent to be artsy about it. There's no intent to be anything other than shit that is like, again, I use the term, uh, the band Niflheim as a good example. They look fucking ridiculous in a cool way because those motherfuckers understand that if you add more spikes to something, it only gets better. And they're crucial and they're real metalheads. And I feel the same way about merch. I feel the same way about releases. Like we don't care, you know, we don't really care for digital media, but at the yeah. same time, man, you kind of, that is your entry point to a lot of people's listening experiences, but we don't want to even put out a single without putting out some sort of physical media for it because we're not, we're not those guys either. You know, like streaming media is a necessary evil. You can be all fucking cult and just put your shit on band camp but at the end of the day, you want you want to be a live band. You want people to hear your band. And also, Blasphemy is on band camp. So anybody that shits on it, you're saying Blasphemy sucks. So I fucking figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's like, what yeah. are you going to do? Well, anybody that says that's a fucking idiot, we're on band camp too. And, it's, and we've sold a shitload of crap on there too. And it's a great platform. I, I mean, works out good for me. And I'm with you. I don't like digital shit. I want to see something that I can fucking touch and look at pictures and shit. And also, too, when you make a, a CD or a, a record, I want some cool pictures in there. I don't want a one pig cover and a black and white background, nothing in there. I want some shit to look at. Yeah. So, and plus, these days, all these pussies want to watch shit on or stream stuff. When you put, put a physical piece of music out there, it's got to be something cool to make them want to buy it. If there's yeah. if it's got a shitty cover on it, boring, no pictures. I know I'm not I'm not gonna buy that. I want to make sure it's something worth getting. Yeah, yeah, and you guys took that approach too with your demos, even man. Like I got your demos, and it's like 
you put more work into the cover art and design of your demos than some bands put into their actual records, which is like, yeah. that's again, that's how I knew. I was like, oh, this guy's a crucial motherfucker. Like I told you before, I found you because I saw you talking about Mortuary Drinks, and that's my favorite band ever. And I was like, oh, this guy, this guy's into this shit. And then I realized like, there is a mentality of, you know, understanding that image fucking matters, understanding that, um, you know, there's something fundamentally cool about this genre that you don't get in other genres. And it matters what you look like and it matters how you present your band. And it also matters, you know, if you release something that somebody wants to put in their collection. Most of us in this genre are fucking nerds. Obviously, we are collectors. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. It has to be that way. Well, I think it's uh, going pretty damn well. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else you do. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to end this on? We've been here about an hour, but I think it's been a good conversation, good shit here. But anything you want to end on, what's coming up or anything? Yeah, man. I would say, um, like I said, we have Bandcamp. Uh, we've got a bunch of merch on there. Jim's Label 2 uh, has our, uh, our cassette and our CD. And um, depending on when this comes out, next weekend, the uh, 17th of uh, February, we're playing with a band called Forest of Gin in uh, knoxville tennessee uh oh, cool. that should be a good one it's another gems label band again crucial motherfuckers with spikes and corpse paint and shit so um it should be good and please uh fucking spread the word so we don't have to deal with this pay-to-play bullshit like we could be playing with fucking uh exciter but we gotta sell 40 tickets so it's not fucking happening so organically yeah, if you would and you're watching this uh spread the word of humongous yeah, I pay the play is fucking garbage. Yeah, well, yeah man. Uh, thanks for coming on. I definitely was looking forward to this. I already do. I said I need to get this motherfucker on here because this is me speaking my language. So, uh, yeah, yeah we'll, be, yeah, we'll be in touch and, uh, you know, maybe do another interview down the road and go from there, man. Absolutely, man. And uh, I appreciate it. you were the first person to fuck with our shit and review our cassette. So we're like sincerely grateful and uh, appreciate that you use your uh, audience and your platform to to promote stuff like this because there's not many people doing it, you know? So I appreciate it. There'll be more. All right, man. Hail Satan. Hail Humongous. <laughs> yeah. Ayatollah. <laughs>